This is Plant-Based Briefing, plant-based cooking with no oil, from plantpurecommunities.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson, and this is the Curated Content Plant-Based Podcast, where I select articles and get permission and read them to you here on plant-based and vegan topics. Today's post is from Plant Pure Communities. They're a nonprofit working to build stronger, healthier, and more sustainable communities through research, policy, and program activities. They collaborate with local community organizations to educate people about the health and environmental benefits of a whole food plant-based diet. They were formed following the release of the 2015 documentary, Plant Pure Nation. It's a documentary that I recommend and it demonstrates how political and economic interests suppressed the message of plant-based nutrition for decades. And it concludes with a call to action for people to form local plant-based support groups called PODs. And Plant Pure Communities supports these pods, providing resources, get-togethers, all kinds of great information on their website, plantpurecommunities.org. So now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Plant-based cooking with no oil from plantpurecommunities.org. Why no oil? Eating meals that contain no oil can have positive health benefits, especially for people struggling with type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. As explained by Dr. T. Colin Campbell, oil is an isolated fraction of a whole food, and when consumed in such a concentrated form, is alien to the body and can have harmful health effects. Fats are an important part of the diet, but should be consumed in the form of whole foods such as nuts, seeds, avocados, and soy. Cooking plant-based meals that contain no oil may seem daunting at first. This info sheet has been crafted to help you make this adjustment seamlessly and with a particular focus on outcomes that include delicious taste and appetizing appearances. Oil Substitutes and Tips for Cooking Without Oil Dry sauté vegetables using water, vegetable broths, wines, and or juices as needed. The trick is to use small amounts of liquids, one to two tablespoons at a time, to deglaze the pan as necessary. Keep the food moving in the pan by stirring frequently. The process is similar to sautéing with oil. There is no need to use chicken stock or oils in any vegetable soup. Veggie stock works fine. Use non-stick pots and pans to prevent sticking and burning, such as a heavy-bottomed stainless steel pan. Be sure to always preheat the pan. Roast all vegetables, including veggie burgers, potatoes, tofu, and tempeh on parchment-lined baking sheets or non-stick silicone mats and ovenware. There are large and inexpensive silicone mats designed for restaurant-style ovens. As an added bonus, these baking sheets and mats make cleanup a breeze. Roasted vegetables are tastier than boiled. Consider roasting veggies, even if they will later be blended into a soup. Deep frying can be replaced by baking, and it works well with a similar breading technique. Dip vegetables into a flour or starch base, then a non-dairy milk, and then coat the veggies with breadcrumbs or crushed cornflakes. Place the breaded veggies on a silicone-lined baking sheet and bake to achieve a crisp golden brown final product. This process works particularly well for foods like onion rings, veggie crab cakes or burgers, eggplant, zucchini, and cauliflower. Most vegetables contain plenty of moisture and won't get overly dried. Nevertheless, to avoid drying or to rehydrate a food, use a steamer or have a spray bottle with water handy and spray foods before they go in the oven. Also, spraying refrigerated or frozen breads before reheating them in the oven will make them taste like they were freshly baked. Use nuts, nut butters, seeds, avocados, beans, and tofu to build creamy dressings and sauces. International food markets, especially Indian stores, Often sell broken nuts in bulk at discounted prices. Use additional ingredients such as vinegar, spices, fruits, mustards, and nutritional yeast flakes to create unique dressings. A blender with powerful blades and motors like a Vitamix is a highly recommended tool. Blending helps to emulsify the natural fats that occur in many plant-based foods. For specific ideas, you can refer to the Plant Pure Nation and the Plant Pure Kitchen cookbooks to get recipes for over 30 dressings and sauces. Cashew cream and coconut milk, both readily available at most supermarkets, are excellent replacements for dairy cream and butter. When baking breads, pizza crusts, and baked goods, try replacing eggs and oils with aquafaba, chickpea or garbanzo bean juice, flax meal or water, applesauce, cornstarch and water, chia meal and water, tapioca or fruit purees. There are many recipes for breads, pizza crusts, and baked goods in the Plant Pure cookbooks. Leave out the oils when cooking with legumes, pasta, and grains. They are unnecessary. 
While most people cannot tell when cooking oil has been removed, people who have removed oil from their diets can quickly detect a dish that's been prepared with oil. Recommended Resources on Oil-Free Meal Preparation The article, Expert Tips on How to Cook Without Oil, provides a breakdown of how to sauté, stir-fry, bake, and roast without added fat. It's at ForksOverKnives.com. The four-minute video, No Oil Sauté, by Plant Peer Chef Kim Campbell, reviews tips and tricks for sautéing without oil. You can find it on YouTube. The focus of the Plant Peer community's culinary philosophy is on eating meals made from whole plant foods without added oils and using minimal salt and sugar. However, many pods allow for flexibility in added oil at potlucks, as it is often challenging for people who are transitioning to a whole food plant-based diet to change everything at once. At the beginning of this process, many people rely on what we would call transitional foods, items that are highly processed, such as oil-based vegan cheeses or store-bought veggie burgers which contain oil. Also, for some, it is not a major health concern to have a small amount of oil in a dish. Having said this, we want to emphasize that the goal should be to eliminate oil from your diet. If you keep your mind open to cooking without oil, you will likely find you don't miss it. You just listened to Plant-Based Cooking with No Oil from PlantPureCommunities.org. And I'm your host, Marian Erickson. Please feel free to contact me if you want to share any feedback or have suggestions. My email can be found at plantbasedbriefing.com. And you're always encouraged to leave a review if you have something nice to say. I think currently you can leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Podchaser, CastBox, Podcast Addict, and Good Pods. This podcast is not a moneymaker. In fact, it's an expense. I'm doing it as my contribution to the plant-based and vegan movement for the animals, for health, and for the environment. So I really would love to hear from you if you have something nice to say or even just any suggestions. I do read and reply to every email, and I appreciate it. Thanks for listening.